is Pedro Carneiro. I'm a professor of economics at the University College London, and I'm a research fellow at the Institute for Fiscal Studies and the Center for Micro Data Methods and Practice. Did you knew from the beginning you wanted to do research, or you had a lot of doubts in your head? You know, when I went to Chicago, I, mean, I, I was very young and idealistic, and so I wanted to understand poverty, and I wanted to understand how to get people out of poverty. So, and that, but that's very common among, I mean, I know I'm not saying many, but many economists, I mean, even I remember Gary Becker saying the same thing, and many other economists, you know, back then, oh, I want to understand what causes this, how to get people out of it, so, but actually this stayed in the back of my mind until today, and so it motivates a lot of what I do, of course, not, not as idealistically, but, uh, but that's what I wanted to do, really. Yeah. Do you believe there is an overemphasis on trying to solve the issue at an older age and that, that that emphasis should be put on educating younger people. You know, I think one practical problem of education policy is only work, it works in the long run. And so you see the benefits, for example, benefits of even education policy at very early ages or skill policy at very early ages, benefits of early childhood intervention really come, I mean the bigger benefits really come in adult life. Mm -hmm. And so these are investments that pay off, start paying off Seriously, I mean, they start paying off before, but really seriously, in you know, 20 years later. Mm -hmm. And so you have to have this long, long term, mm -hmm. long term uh, uh, view in government to really understand fully this problem and, and design the policies that you need to do it. But, but I think, I mean, I, I mean, my advisor was James Heckman at the University of Chicago, and he's making a big push for, for that in, on the economic side. So, uh, making the business, you know, they call it the business case for early childhood intervention. So I mean, it's all it's all about that. But not only many people now are on board with the idea, but it's 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 very hard to shift the focus towards the earlier years. Even though there's more and more evidence that without a good foundation, you know, the later investments don't pay off as much. So so it's very hard to work with older people without uh, really uh, addressing their early uh, childhood issues. Yeah. You have a paper, at least, uh, and I, I find it, that issue very interesting. It is very hard to calculate human capital, and it's very hard to calculate ability and uh, education and the effect of education. Uh, do you think there is a lot of econom econometric troubles with uh, human capital, or do you think it's simply people haven't been looking enough at the issue? No, there are many problems. So there are measurement problems. <laughs> so there are measurement problems. How do you measure human capital? That's a very <laughs> very common question, what is human capital, right? So now in the, in the beginning, uh, economists, I mean the, the human capital, I don't know if you know the, the history, but then it, it was not accepted at all, even, even within economists. It was a very controversial topic, and very controversial concept. And, uh, and, and, and then Gary Becker was, it was put down all the time, he said this makes no sense, and, but he kept going. And so even among economists, were controversial. But, but, but from the beginning, I mean, if you had to equate human capital with something, it started being with schooling now. It stuck for a little while. And that was, I mean, after a while, yes, it, it was a little bit exhausted. And, and, but it was very useful for a while. And now we have much broader understanding of human capital, and maybe we call human development. And then now we're, we're more in tune with other sciences, maybe. Mm -hmm. we, I mean, we talk more about psychological, uh, uh, character traits, or even health. Mm -hmm. It's recognized to be so important for human development, and and so all, all these things we now we call human capital, but it's hard to measure. Mm -hmm. It's hard to measure ability. It's hard to measure character traits. It's hard to measure many aspects of your health. So there are measurement issues, and then and then these measurement issues many times create uh, many econometric problems when you try to deal with them. Uh, in, when you try to incorporate these measures in your in your in your models, mm -hmm. for example, and on top of that, the process by, of accumulation of human capital also creates a, econometric issues because it's it's a choice variable. Each time you have a choice variable in economics, and you want to deal with that uh, 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 in your empirical models, it it becomes it's difficult because many unobservables variables guide your choices, and then it's hard to account for all of them. So. Yeah. So the, that's that's really the crux of the problem. Uh, just one more question on this particular topic. Do you think it's a big problem for Portugal, human capital accumulation? Oh yeah, yeah. I, I, yes, I, I believe it's a central problem for Portugal. I've had the opportunity to 
I mean, I don't come to Portugal very much to speak on the issues, but I, I've had the opportunity to do, to do it twice. I remember one at the beginning of the IMF program, there was a, there was a workshop organized by the Treasury, by the Finance Ministry. And then more, more recently, this year I was here in a workshop organized by uh, Belmiro Dias Verde Foundation, Edu Organet. I mean, if you just look at the data, you see that, uh, I mean, the statistics show very clearly Portugal has a very big deficit, even compared to other OECD countries, in terms of, I mean, if you just look at education, I'm not even looking at other aspects of human capital, I mean, if you just look at education, there's a very big deficit. There's, I think what troubles me more is the uh, amount of children who don't uh, finish high school. And, and so, I mean, of course, that was incredibly high in the previous generation, but even in current generation, is very low. Uh, Sorry, very high. And we know that the returns, I mean, at least when we, when we measure the returns as best as we can, I mean, I haven't done it, my, but my Portuguese colleagues have done it. The returns to finishing high school are very high. The returns to going to university are very high. And so, economically, <laughs> it's a very, very rational decision to, en to engage in more schooling also. In terms of financial costs, uh, uh, education uh, is, is basically free in Portugal. So, so it has to be some other thing that's yeah. preventing people from getting more education.